Hey there. Good morning from Los Angeles, California. Uh, great to be here with everybody. Um, I'm going to talk today about soulmates and online dating. <laughs> this is an interesting combo, right? I've never done this before, this particular combo. But let me just kind of introduce myself because many of you know me, some of you don't um, know me that well. But um, I'm a meditation teacher and a spiritual teacher. And um, hey, Heather, uh, good to have you on. So, um, and, and I've been teaching meditation for 50 years, almost 50 years. And I've been meditating for that long. And I've been doing spiritual work and teaching uh, people for almost that long too. Um, my memories go back 6,000 years, my past life memories. And I've had many experiences on the other side and so forth. So that's kind of a quick overview of my background. You can watch some of my other videos on my YouTube channel. I'm going to post this on my YouTube channel um, later today. So uh, feel free to go there and check out some of the other videos. You can find out more about my background and so forth there or on my we uh, my website, kelvinchin.org, kelvinchin.org. Um, but many of you know that a part about me, but you don't know that I've been, uh, I, I was on online dating websites for 10 years. So I have a lot of experience with, with that arena too. So I thought, well, let's marry these up. Uh, no pun intended, I guess. Um, and, uh, and talk about it um, uh, separately, but then, but, you know, kind of put them together and talk about them together. Um, and I want to open this up to Q and A and so forth at the end when we get going with that. So um, the way this came about was um, I was talking to one of my meditation students. Uh, with she can name herself if she wants to, but she doesn't have to. <laughs> um, and uh, we were going to meditate together, and she said something about online dating, and and she said just oh, it's just such a nightmare and it's so difficult and people don't tell the truth or something like you know the usual litany of stuff that we hear about online dating and i said oh i've been there i did that for 10 years i could give a i could give a seminar on pitfalls and stuff to avoid she says oh you should do that so here we go um so i thought i'd marry this up with the whole soulmates idea and talk about that first um because a lot of times people are they're looking for their soulmate or soulmates or whatever. Uh, I'll define these terms in the way I think about them anyway in a minute. Uh, and, 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 and very often people are doing that on, on online dating sites. Uh, I can't tell you how many hundreds, maybe thousands, I don't know, of profiles I saw of, of women saying, I'm looking for, in quotes, sometimes in all capital letters, the one, looking for that one guy. Uh, the one, uh, as if there is one guy out there that they're looking for. Um, so let's define souls first. Let's just kind of go back to square one and just talk about this concept of the idea of souls. So many of you will hear me in my lectures uh, or have already heard me in my lectures use the term mind. So I work across 44 countries now so far in the world and um and this is how i teach typically you know online now uh, for the last 10 years anyway and um i i i want to talk in language that people can understand first of all because sometimes english is their second or third or fourth language but also understand in a way that's not culturally or religiously based so i tend to not use the word soul which we're going to be using a lot today i tend to use the word mind but when I'm talking about mind, I'm talking about soul, spirit, consciousness, awareness, you know, the, the regular uh, conscious waking state mind that we use when we're walking down the supermarket aisle to make decisions about what we need to buy at Trader Joe's or at Ralph's or Sprout's supermarket or whatever. But also that larger sense of self that we all can have and that I help people unfold to. In, in the techniques that I teach. So, so that's what I refer to as mind. So you could substitute the word soul 
just like we're going to talk about today, or you could uh, substitute the word consciousness, awareness, spirit is another word, or your energy. People can use these, my individual energy. Um, people will use various synonyms. So today we're going to use the word soul. Um, so that's how I define souls. You know, each of us has an individual soul that has its its own personality, really, um, is, is how we can most easily talk about it. That's transferable, that is transferable from uh, my experience, from body to body, from lifetime to lifetime, we can take on a different body and so forth. Um, so that's that aspect of us that, in my experience, continues after we physically, biologically die. So what about this idea of soulmates? So do we have soulmate, soulmates? Um, first of all, let me define what uh, how I use the term. Uh, I use the term soulmates to mean those souls, spirits, consciousness, minds, who we really have a very, very, very close connection with. In whatever way, we just can define it kind of more generically. We have an unbelievably close connection with those other souls or minds or spirits, consciousnesses, okay? Um, and they're identifiable. We, it, it, we, we can identify, oh, that person, oh, I just have a... So we can, we can have that experience on this side, and we can also have that experience on the other side. So we don't lose that ability when we physically, biologically die to, to, to recognize... Uh, uh, when we don't have a body, we uh, we can we still can recognize a physical biological body. We can still recognize those souls, those minds, who we have this incredible connection with on the other side. Um, that's my experience, my direct experience. Um, but do we have one soulmate? That's I think in the dating world or the relationship or the romantic world. Um, I think that's a mistaken. Uh, understanding, a misunderstanding that people have. They think they have one soulmate. Um, and my experience, the way I'm defining soulmates, is that incredible con close connection uh, with another being is that we have many soulmates. And we can have many soulmates on in, in various different levels or relationships. Level is the wrong word. I don't like to use the word levels. But, but different Different types is more appropriate word. Different types of relationships that are very intense on a soul level, on a very deep level. And uh, so we can have romantic relationships like that, which we'll talk more about today. But we can also have other types of soulmate relationships, friends, uh, very deep, incredible friendships, and uh, brother, sister, Father, daughter, father, son, mother, son, mother, daughter, cousins, nephews, nieces, etc. Fill in the gaps. Fill in those blanks. Okay, you get the idea. Um, many, many, many different types of very, very deep soul relationships. Now, why do I point that out? I point that out because, for a number of reasons. One is that, from a soul perspective. We can choose to change uh, relationships in a next lifetime. In other words, for example, my daughter this lifetime, Samantha, she goes by Sam. Sam and I are obviously father and daughter this lifetime. We have been sister and brother in another lifetime that I remember and that she, she remembers in this lifetime mistaking, mistakenly calling me her brother to her friends many times when she was in college at San Francisco State University. So um, when you have those kinds of slip-ups, that, that might be, we don't know absolutely for sure, but that might be a window into a different type of relationship you may have had with that person, those type of verbal slip-ups uh, when you're talking about them with other people might be an indication that you may have had another relationship with that person in another lifetime that's reflective of how you're calling them. Now, in this case, I've called her by mistake, <laughs> my, my sister, when I'm describing my daughter to other people. 
So that has happened. Hey, Jayla, good to see, good to see you here. Um, so that 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 that's just kind of a like a, a like is it a mix up? Is it whatever? Well, I have subsequently had memories about being with her in a lifetime. Oh, let's see, it's like 250 years ago, or something, whatever the mid 1700s is. You do the math. Um, around 1760, um, she was my my older sister, and so now she's my daughter. So my point is giving that as an example is we have these relationships with each other from for thousands, for millennia, many thousands of years. And we can have different relationships with each other, different types of relationships with each other. So um, now, obviously, we're going to talk about this lifetime. We're talking about online dating in this lifetime. And there's certain appropriate relationships that we're going to be involved with in dating situations. Um, but I'm just saying from a soul perspective, understand that we have many soul mates through thousands and thousands of years that we kind of collect almost in a sense, as we develop very close relationships with them and then continue those relationships in these various types that I just illustrated to you in a different lifetime um, with that person. So they might it might be a romantic relationship in one lifetime and just a friendship in another lifetime or vice versa. Um, so this goes and you can kind of connect the dots and kind of goes to the point that I make in my teaching, which is we don't have one soulmate. And there's a lot of spiritual teachers out there who say, oh, yes, you have one soulmate, and you need to find that one soulmate and all this. And that's a misunderstanding because, um, first of all, it creates an incredible amount of pressure on you. Are you serious? Oh, I got like, what, 60, 70, 80, 100 years on the outside, maybe, to find my one soulmate this lifetime, and then boom, I'm off planet Earth again on the other side, and I got to come in another body, and then give it another try and try my try to find my one soulmate no it first of all as i've already described to you we have these many types of relationships that are incredibly deeply soulful and i would call them a soulmate type of relationship that can be defined sociologically in terms of our social norms in in many different ways look at Social norms today in 2020 are what they are. Though those of you who don't have your past life memories like I do, but who are history buffs and have read and know some history about the world, know that the social norms that existed, I don't know, pick a millennia, uh, a thousand, two thousand years ago, four thousand years ago. In ancient 2,000 years ago, ancient Rome, 4,000 years ago, uh, you know, 3,000 years ago in ancient, um, you know, three, 4,000 in ancient Egypt, in Sumeria in 6,000 years ago, or in um, the Middle East, in uh, just in, you know, Judea, in, you know, what, what we refer to as the Old Testament of the Bible. I mean, you, if you read the Old Testament of the Bible, you'll see that there's all kinds of social norms that would be considered today against the law, all right? So I'm just saying that souls span millennia, many, many thousands of years. Ah, bonjour, Shannon from Paris. Good to see you on. Great to have you on. So, so we span thousands of years as souls, many, 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 many thousands of years. Arguably, you know, this is a different talk, but... Millions of years. My, my, is, 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 I have thousands of years of personal ex memories. You know, six thousand years. But logically, it seems to me that we are eternal, not even millions, but forever. So, if you're thinking about our souls in that context, we can have all kinds of relationships in all different societies through time that may have different social mores and social customs 
that may be very similar to 2020 planet Earth or may be very different when you just go back not that long ago into the Old Testament of the Bible. And, you know, I don't need to get into biblical stuff. I am not a biblical scholar at all. Many of you know much more about the Bible than I do. But you know what I'm referring to. So I'm just using that as a teaching tool to just to just make the point that we have many, many, many soulmates and many, many, many deep connections with people uh, who are incarnated now on planet Earth and people who are on the other side who are not physically in a body right now because they chose to hang out in what we may call heaven or the afterlife, the other side, whatever you want to call it, for however long they want to. Because you don't have to come back. Nobody makes makes you come back. You come back when you want to. And so, um, you know, many of our soulmates are over there too and, and not here in physical form. So I've just debunked the whole notion of looking for the one in all capital letters on your online dating profile. I'll be very honest with you guys. When when I, I have I'm, I'm not on I'm not on the web the, these dating websites anymore for the last few years, but um, when I was, when I saw the profiles that said, I'm looking for the one, I, I, I swiped. I swiped whichever way. I can't remember which. You know, back when you did match, you just, you know, I, I was on like, I don't even know how many, four or five different, I can't remember. Uh, you know, I'd go on for like several months and then I'd leave for two, three months to take a vacation from online dating. That's a whole other story. How much time sync it can involve. Those of you who are thinking about getting into it, uh, you know, it, 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 I know some of you are already on the online dating websites, and some of you are not, and are, have been talking, have asked me about, you know, getting on it and so forth. Uh, you, you just, just be be aware that it can be an incredible time sink. So I would leave it, leave them for two or three months, literally, you know, during that ten year period, and then come back on and so forth. But whenever I saw a profile, my point here, when I saw a profile that said, I'm looking for the one, boom, I said, no, that's not that you, we have a different, uh, a different agenda here, different belief system. And uh, that's, that's, that's something that, that, that might be a deal breaker for us. So I, I just moved on. Um, so yeah, we can have many, 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 many soulmates throughout our many, many, many lifetimes. Now, what about this idea of soul contracts? So soul plans, soul contracts, people will use different phrases, but mo the most commonly one, uh, used one that I hear is soul contracts. So we'll use that phrase. Now you guys know, many of you know that I have a legal background. And so you gotta understand that uh, uh, many of you are not lawyers. So uh, you gotta understand contracts are not written in stone. There are no contracts that are written in stone. You, the parties to the contract can always change the contract if they mutually agree upon it. And not only that, but not everybody not everybody abides by the, the, the terms of the contract always. Hello, that's why we have litigation. That's why we have lawsuits. But my point in terms of the context that we're talking about today in terms of soulmates is that can we have soul contracts or soul plans that we create on the other side before we're born uh, into a you know the family and you know the womb and the fetus and the biological body and the whole thing. Yes, the short answer is absolutely yes. And I've been involved in many soul contracts uh, that I'm aware of, and there's probably tons of them that I'm not aware of. <laughs> you know, because you don't remember everything. You know, how, how many of you remember? Like, oh, I remember that soul contract. No, yeah, I don't remember them all either. So, so, but I do remember some, and and so. Can we have conversations like that with other souls on the other side before we come into a physical body? Absolutely, yes, we can do that. Um, it, but it's a choice. Not everybody does it. So, so it, it's, it's a mistake, I think, if you hear or misunderstanding um, that when you hear some spiritual teachers, oh, yeah, we everybody does a soul contract. You all have a soul contract. But that's a lot of angels on the other side telling people or dead spiritual teachers on the other side who have that belief system because they did it and they know a whole ton of souls who did do it. And then they conflate that. They confuse that. And they say, yeah, yeah, everybody does it. Well, not everybody does it. We have free will. We have choice. Not everybody creates a soul plan. Just think about it 
just logically yourself this side, on this side and planet Earth, the, everybody you know, are they strategic thinkers? Is everybody you know a strategic thinker? Because to create a soul plan, you have to have a personality type that's going to plan ahead. That's what I mean when I say strategic thinker. You got to be, you got to, you don't create a plan unless you're a planner, right? If you're like, ah, just do this, I'll do that, I'll do this, I'll do that. My experience traveling around and living in seven countries in the world this lifetime is that most people are not like that. Most of the people I've run into are not planners. Most of the people I've, thousands of people I've worked with in different jobs I've had, you know, now I do this full time, what I'm doing now, but you know, when I was raising a family and I have two children, as many of you know, you know, I had regular jobs where I needed to rake, make regular money uh, to, to, to support them. Well, most of the thousands of people I've run into are not planners. They're not strategic thinkers. Well, they don't obviously all of a sudden change as soon as they die and they're on the other side. We take our personality with us, as I said earlier in our talk today. So keep that in mind. Um, but yes, you can have a you you can ha you can get together with people, and this is why I do what I do because I'm planting seeds in your mind so that you will plan you because you know you can plan. So why not plan when you're on the other side and get together with your friends and Shannon and Heather and Rachel and you guys may run into each other on the other side and you'll recognize each other because we have identifiable energy patterns. Is my experience on the other side. So you will still recognize each other. Whether you call each other Shannon, Heather, or Rachel, or whatever, you could have different, you can just call each other from a name that you remember when you're on the other side that you guys had in a different lifetime when you guys were friends too. So, you know, it doesn't matter. But you're going to identify, you're going to be, you're going to recognize, is, is what I'm saying. You're going to recognize each other when you, after you physically, biologically die. So could you, the three of you, get together on the other side and say, hey, let's get together and go down on planet Earth and, you know, let's chill out here for a while. You know, it's kind of tough living on Earth, you know. So let's just chill out on vacation, vacation land, <laughs> heaven, Vaca vacation land on the other side. Let's chill out here for about 50 years, Earth years, or maybe 150 years, I don't know. But that, let's go down, let's figure it out. We got plenty of time, you know, get plenty of time. You know, for the next 50 or 150 years, Let's plan out what we want to do next time, and let's see if we can make it happen. All right? So you could do that. Now, um, does it always work out? Not necessarily. Why? Because, first of all, one of you guys might change your mind. Uh, hey, Janice, good to see you. You guys, you guys, you guys might change your mind, uh, or somebody that you don't have control over might change his or her mind that influences and affects your life or your lives after you've been incarnated into your new physical bodies. I'm just hypothetically saying 150 years, earth years from now, after you've died and gone to heaven and come back again, your fathers, your fa your brothers, fa your, 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 uh, you know, has different needs. And then your parents need to move. And then, or your, your, your dad's or your mom's employer decides, no, we're going to move the company here and there across the country, across the planet. And all of a sudden, Shannon's in Paris and Heather's in the, in, uh, in the United States somewhere and blah, blah, blah. Whereas maybe you started in, uh, you know, closer to each other in the U.S. or in Canada or wherever you started together. And so things like that can happen. So soul plans can get disrupted not just by our own choices, but by other people's choices, other minds' choices. So that can happen, all right? But, they're, but they do exist. And so what my teaching is here is the stronger our minds are, in other words, the more expanded, those of you who have taken my meditation class, you, you know I, I use this phrase, we, the more expanded our capacity for mental experiences, or another way of saying the same thing, the more expanded our conscious capacity, our consciousness, our individual consciousness, the more it's expanded, the more powerful it is. And therefore, if you run into that, I'm just using Shannon and another, you guys, um, 
and Rachel as an example here. You guys run into each other and you run into a snag. You know, one of your fathers gets relocated in his job and blah, blah, blah. And you guys move. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. You know what? You're messing up our soul plan. You know, the stronger, the more powerful your mind is, the more likely you will recreate something in order to get together. You'll create something, not recreate. You'll you'll create an opportunity. Hey, let's get together in college. I know, you know, your dad had to move and blah, blah, blah. Let's figure out like, and you'll coordinate and you'll get the soul plan back on track. All right. That's the thing. But that's based on our free will, our personal choices. And not only that, but the more powerful our minds are, the more effective we can be at making those things happen. That's why I teach what I teach. That's why I teach this type of class. And that's why I teach the meditation classes to empower people to be more effective and happier and less anxious and all that other good stuff, but be more effective and productive in their lives and in their future lives too. Because this technique that I'm teaching you, you will, you can remember this from lifetime to lifetime and keep doing it. And it'll make your mind po more powerful, more powerful, more powerful each time, uh, you're, 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 you know, as you continue through the cycles, so to speak. Okay. So, um, you know, example, another example, have I, uh, had personal experience with some people from 2000 years ago who I was in that lifetime with? Absolutely. Yes. And I know some of them, I know a bunch of them who they are now today from that lifetime 2000 years ago when I was here. Those of you who know about that lifetime. Um, and, uh, one of those people I was friends with then. We were, let's just say, very close friends, and we taught together, but mostly separately because most of us, we went our separate ways around the Mediterranean and so forth and and uh, in the Middle East and what we now call the Middle East and so forth. And then I ended up in Rome, uh, Italy, teaching, uh, and I died there. But I have a close friendship with this person. And um, is it possible from a soul plan and a soul connection uh, uh, level or aspect to um, reconnect a couple of thousand years later? Yes. And is it possible that, as I just gave you, as a, and you got, the three of you an example, uh, to kind of get derailed a little bit and then, and then go off in different directions because of various choices and family choices and choices that maybe I don't, I'm not even consciously aware of maybe individual choices that we made as individuals and so forth and get kind of separated and in, in, in the soul from a soul perspective because, you know, and, and, and still haven't met yet in this lifetime and then meet much later in this lifetime, meet much later in this lifetime as adults and so forth, and then later get together in this soulmate type of relationship later in life. Yes, in a romantic soulmate relationship later in life. Yes, that is possible. Okay. So again, um, feel free to bring up questions. I'm going to switch now to the online dating <laughs> sec sec section of our talk and tips and so forth. Uh, but feel free to bring up questions. Uh, and don't be shy in the in the Q&A afterwards. Um, and you can, um, you know, write them in the, uh, in, in the comment section, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. However, however, it works here um, on, on Facebook Live, feel free to write them in there. Um, so again, what what am I what, what's what's I'll, I'll just sum up my uh, uh, as we segue from the soulmates to the online dating. I'll sum up the key point uh, that that bridges both, and and the key point is to be open but discerning, <laughs> open but discerning, open but consciously uh, 
clear about what and why you're making certain choices as you move into the dating uh, area or or relationship, whether you're dating or whether it's a relationship you're looking at. It either way, I kind of use the online dating thing kind of somewhat uh, tongue in cheek, uh, but um, in the title. But you know, you could think about it as any sort of relationship as well. Discerning, looking at it clearly and analyzing it and making sense of it. That's what I mean by when I say discern, discerning or discriminating, but discriminating in the good sense of that, in the discerning way of using our discriminating, uh, discerning mind, okay? Um, but open, because as I said, soulmates, we don't know. And we may run into somebody in an online dating site or in any social media platform, could run into somebody here on Facebook or on Instagram or any of the other social media platforms that keep growing out there in the world. You may meet somebody who might, you might have a soulmate relationship with who you've never uh, met before in this lifetime, but there's this connection. There's this unusual connection there immediately. Now, does that mean that you immediately jump to having a romantic relationship with them? No. Remember, what did I just go through when we talked about soulmates? We can have all types of soulmates. So maybe that's a an old friend of yours who you you've had this close friendship with and you could you could have switched genders too just a quick <laughs> quick aside on that i remember being female as well so it doesn't mean that you've always been a female or you always have been a male gender um because we don't have genders on the other side so um but you know people will have more of a personality type we'll just say that's one way or the other and, you, and then you can biologically come in in, in whatever gender that you, that you choose. But um, my point is that back to this running into somebody who you have this incredible connection with, don't just jump to jump into, you know what? I mean, you know, jump into a relationship, you know, a romantic relationship with them immediately. Um, discern. That's what I mean by discerning, looking at things clearly and understanding that we can have these deep, deep soul connections with people. Look, at another example. You may have a deep, deep soul connection with an old spouse of mine. Somebody who I've been married to, let's just say, a thousand or two thousand years ago, and I see them, her this lifetime, okay, um, before we get married, of course, I see her at this time, this lifetime, and this is incredible connection, and da-da-da-da, and maybe I even she didn't have the experience, but let's say I have the experience of a memory of being together with her some millennia ago. Well, again, uh, what I didn't remember was some aspects about the personality that I really loved, and then some aspects that rubbed me the wrong way, and then we ended up getting divorced. Could that happen? Absolutely. Yes, it can happen. So, um, again, discerning. Now, keep in mind, nobody's perfect. Nobody's discernment is perfect. And so even if we, we are discerning, we can make mistakes and, and just, you know, it just happens. You know, uh, a, a friend of mine once said to me in a business context when I, uh, let's just say I got, um, I got unethically uh, <laughs> unethically treated by one of my former employers, uh, financially unethically treated. And uh, he said, uh, my friend of mine said to me, he said, a home run hitter strikes out, Kel. A home run hitter strikes out a lot sometimes. And so you just it just happens, you know? So don't be too harsh on yourself is my point. If you've been in a relationship, and some of you I know just from personal conversations with you, um, private conversations with you, that you've been in relationships that you really thought were going to be that real soul connection type of relationship and it didn't work out. Don't be too harsh on yourself and don't be afraid to jump back in the, what do they say, get back on the saddle or get back on the bike, bicycle and, and ride again, okay? Um, so 
as I talk about some of this um, online dating or relationship stuff, um, what I'm going to be doing in this part of our talk together is just basically issue spotting. In, in, in law, they call it issue spotting. In law school, they call it spotting the issues. So I'm not going to be telling you what to do because that's between you and yourself, right? We all live our own lives. But I'm going to be issue spotting and just kind of giving you some red flags and issues to look, to keep an eye out for and to look look at. But you need to make the decisions, okay? Um, and, um, and again, like I said earlier, for those of you who may be, who never have been on to, in, into online dating, or even just, forget about online, we'll talk about that specifically here, but, but even just dating. You know, I had been out of the mix for 20 years. I was married for 21 years, you know? So um, I had dated, you know, I was completely, you know, monogamous. It's the whole nine yards, um, 21 years. And it, for, for some of you who, are, who may be in a similar boat at, you know, 35, 40, 50 years old, some of you, um, it might be a little scary, and it was a little scary for me. I was like, well, I've never done this before. This isn't a long time. I kind of remember what to do, but I'd never been on the online thing. So it's, it's for those of you who are kind of new to this, just dating or online dating, and you're kind of fumbling around with this a little bit, um, both technologically and maybe even emotionally, maybe some of this will help. Okay? Um, one just heads up to, to, to you um, is that... And I'm saying this to the women and to the guys here who are in the audience, you know, you can draw and learn from these things too that I'm saying. And some of the stuff I will address to the men and some I'll address to the women, but um, in the audience here. Um, but as I said, you know, I was online for almost 10 years on various online websites. But one thing that, uh, let me just say, how many dates did Kelvin have? Let me just give you a quick summary before I kind of go 100,000 foot with you. Uh, I, I don't know. I stopped counting at a, maybe a couple hundred. And you may say, a couple of hundred? What? But here's the thing. what I got very efficient at it because, as I alluded to earlier, it can be an incredible time sink. Not just online looking in profiles and swiping and this and that and all that stuff that you do and then sending a text and email. Uh, but But – the whole process can be incredible time sink, but you don't want to waste too much time, to be on. I'll just cut, cut to the chase here. You don't want to waste too much time here because for some people, they're just online. Which this was not me. Now, if this is you, again, I'm just issue spotting here. It's, it's, it's okay. I'm not saying this is right or wrong. But, but for some people, they're just on it to pass time. They're really not on it to look and to date somebody. And, to, and, and so you got to screen out, I'm saying this to both the men and the women here, but mainly the women I'm saying this to, because there's a lot of guys who are just looking at pictures, and that's it. And you'll see in profile, if you, here's one recommendation. I recommend that you, if you're online, you should create a fake profile and go on as, a, as the opposite gender and look at some of the other profiles. So if you're a woman do a fake profile and 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 go in and look at the other women if you're a woman go fake fake profile as a guy go in and look as at the women's profiles and see what they're writing and, and you look at your competition basically i'm assuming you're heterosexual you may not be heterosexual and that's fine too so you know i have many you know lbgtq friends so and clients so um so anyway, I'm just going to, for simplicity, I'm just going to speak about this from a heterosexual standpoint. So bear with me on that just because, well, I'm heterosexual. So, <clears throat> um, so for the guys, I suggest that you create a guy profile and go look at the other guy pro, uh, profiles too. Okay? <clears throat> a fake guy profile. So, um, so um, I think she's going to. My apartment manager is washing my window, so if you hear anything there, that might be what's going on. She just asked me. Um, so um, <clears throat> that's a good tip to do, okay? Because you'll see how people are expressing themselves. And um, what I did to fast forward through this is when I said 200 dates, they what I did, I got very efficient. So what I would do 
is I would text people or message people, you know, on the dating app or whatever first. And, you know, you want to make sure that, first of all, is it a real person? Because there are, I don't know, there, there are probably, there are hundreds of thousands, there's at least tens of thousands of fake profiles out there. Especially, I'm speaking to the guys, there are lots of guys posing as women out there who are very attractive and they'll write a really cool profile sometimes. Sometimes you can see right through them because the profile doesn't make any sense. But, but you know, and they're, and they're, and they're it, 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 like, for example, uh, how many blonde, how many blondes living in Nigeria? How many blondes living in Nigeria do you think there are? So she's watching my window right now. But anyway, blondes living in Nigeria. If you see a profile from a, from a hot blonde living in Nigeria, it's probably 99.9999999% fake profile, okay? I just like, I think I even wrote something on what some Facebook post years ago, like, what's with all the blondes living, hot blondes living in Nigeria? I mean, give me a break. Those of you who don't know, if you get anything, it was just a quick aside, forget about online dating. You get an email from a Nigeria, put it in your junk folder. You get a Facebook request from somebody in Nigeria, most likely, again, not 100%, you'd have to look into it, but many of them are fake. Because in Nigeria, those of you who do not have legal backgrounds, those of you who have international legal backgrounds, know the following fact. That in Nigeria, the federal law in Nigeria protects fraudulent behavior. There are actually laws that protect fraud in Nigeria. That's just a quick aside. It's crazy, all right? All right, so all these financial schemes and so forth, you can't be prosecuted for them in, in, in Nigeria. All right, so look out for fake profiles. That's bottom line. Um, so I had, I, you know, I screen all that out. I text, it's a real person, there's a connection. The first thing I would do is let's meet at Starbucks for a coffee. I don't drink coffee anymore. Um, but, um, you know, and, and, but, but, and, 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 but, you know, so I'd go there and have a juice or a bottle of water or whatever. Let's just be. And so that way, number one, you're not wasting a lot of time. All right. And if you're a guy, like I was always picking up the tab, uh, cause that's the kind of guy I am. Now, sometimes you'll go on dates and the woman will say to you, this is a tip to the guys. Okay. The woman will say, Oh, I'll, I'll, we'll go Dutch. I'll split it with you. That's that's like a slippery slope, guys. My advice to you is, no, you pick up the tab. You pick up the tab. That's that's how I roll when I was doing it, you know, even if the woman did. Now, if the woman was adamant, she was adamant and starting getting a little bit, like, intense with me, like, no, I'm going to And she puts her credit card out there and blah, 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 and the waitress or the waiter standing there. Then I, then I would... I would give in. I would say, okay, that's fine. And then I would, we'd go Dutch and we'd split it 50, 50. All right. But if she's just saying that to you guys, I can't tell you how many women have said that to me, that that is like, they've never had a date with that guy again. All right. So that's like a dumb, a, a dumb guy move. All right. So, um, my point is, with avoiding all that expense, if you're a guy, typically, and if you're a woman, even if you're not, you're going to this nice dinner, maybe it's a fancy restaurant because the guy, you know, back when I used to have more money <laughs> and when I was dating, you know, I, you know, take, take the woman out. It's still a waste of your time. Isn't your time useful? I mean, you meet with this guy. You show up and the guy shows up. And here's a little tip for you. No, pictures, people. Come on. Use real life picture pe people. The, you know, this is the picture that I would set, put on my date. Day, day. The picture of me now. This is 2020 Kelvin. I'm not going to put the picture of me when I had a full head of hair and it was down to my shoulders and I looked like a rock and roll guy and blah, blah, blah. You know, if I do that, it's like a joke. And I have like one of those and, you know, eight to 10 pictures of me in 2020. The, you know, we, the, I can't tell you how many women friends that I have or women that I 
you know, have had one of these 200 dates with who are, who, 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 you know, we stayed friends afterwards, you know, they told me, or they just tell me in the, in that, you know, 20 minute or half an hour or 45 minute Starbucks date that I had with them that cost, you know, I'll buy their coffee, you know, whatever, you know, you know, it cost me four bucks, five bucks or whatever, you know, big deal. And I don't, you know, I, I, you know, it only eats up, you know, uh, 45 minutes of my time, maybe an hour. If the conversation really gets rocking and rolling, that's fine. It's fun. But no, n- nothing after that. Well, I can't tell you how many women have told me that they, a guy shows up and, 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 and they show up and uh, they got like, uh, they got a beer, beer belly <laughs> that, that extends out a foot from their body. And that none of the pictures show that. Or, you know, in my case, you know, and, and women do the same thing, guys. So you got to be careful of that. Do not just date women who show you pictures that are 20 years old. Because maybe they're in good shape, even if they say, oh, I still work out every day. Uh, you know, that they may work out every day, but they may not look like the pictures the 20 year old pictures that they have on there. And I had plenty of, uh, I, I actually, you know, I made that mistake a, a few times, but yeah, you make it, make it once or twice and that's it. And then you learn how to, you, 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 you learn the land, you learn the, you, the, uh, the landscape, so to speak. All right. Um, so, um, just a couple of tips for you, but let me go a hundred, th- hundred thousand foot with you. So that's, that's like how to fast forward. Those tips are, how to fast forward through so you don't waste your time with guys or women who you're just not interested in. It's fine to meet people. And that's what you want to do. That's okay. Again, this goes to my issue spotting thing that I raised at the beginning today. I'm just issue spotting for you. How you want to use the online dating site is is, is up to you. But I I was always very upfront with people. I was I, I was there to actually find, you know somebody could have a relationship with as opposed to just a, you know, a, a, a quick friendship or whatever. Now, I, did I make friends? Yes, because that's the nature of who I am. But, you know, whether you're into that in that way or not is up to you. Now, another point I want to go to 100,000 foot with you. I'm just going to talk generally about women in general and guys in general uh, here. So I'm, I'm te- speaking to both of you genders now at the same time. So Understand that many women, and this is not true for all women, but many women in our world still are looking for a patriarch type figure. Now, I don't mean somebody to tell them what to do, although some women are. And so, um, and, and, but why is this? I'm using patriarch in a very, very general sense. Let me just explain to you what I mean. We live in an incredibly still, unfortunately, misogynistic world. Misogynistic means what? It means hater of women or putting women down. And there's a lot of guys out there who are misogynists. And they, may, they, they, won't, come across, they won't say that because they know it's politically incorrect. They won't even behave that way with you women initially because they know that it's not appropriate and it's not going to get them in your door, all right? And they're just trying to get in the door. Those guys you got to watch out for, and the women who are looking for that, I'm talking to the guys now, you need to, you need to in my opinion, I had to look at, let me just use it, because I'm not, I don't want to say what you need to, should do, because, again, I'm issue spotting here. You may, you may, you may love a woman who, who, who's that, and the women, you may love a guy, who tells you everything what to do and gives you no choices. I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm giving you the choice to pick a guy who gives you no choice. So I'm just issue spotting here. But for me, that was a turnoff, you know? So I was looking for those type of types of women who would vote for uh, an authoritarian. They would, they would vote for it politically and vote for it relationally. In other words, that's their personal choice, and that's their choice to do that. I'm not interfering with that, but that's their personality type, all right? So they're, and, and it's very widespread. And guys, I'm talking to you, 
it's more widespread than you than you realize. Even the new age-ish, spiritually oriented women out there, very often are they're, they're not looking for. They want touchy feely guys, but they want somebody who's going to protect them too, because we do live in a tough world. All right, but the extreme, and now I'm talking to the women here. Uh, again, from a heterosexual standpoint, I'm talking to women. Um, be careful because those guys can also be the macho, machismo, it's all about me, bully kind of guys, narciss narcissists. So you gotta you gotta filter, filter, filter. And the filtration doesn't just happen at the beginning; it happens throughout the whole dating process. So don't just date the guy for a week or a month or two months and then get married. That's to me, uh, that's my opinion anyway. Again, your choice, what you do, but that's like high risk, let's just call it high risk. All right. And now, what's the irony? The irony in that mix is if you end up with that incredibly powerful, strong guy who turns into the bully guy with you as he lets down his guard because you now you've let him not into your condo or your apartment or your house door, but you've let him into all the doors of your house. You know what I mean? Okay. Then now he's let down his guard. And what has he shown you? He has shown you his true self because what's the true self of the bully? The true self of the bully, <laughs> Rachel said, been there, ugh. Yeah, what's the true self of the bully? The true self of the bully is the bully is weak. That's why bullies bully, because they are internally weak. They have low sense of self-esteem, low, 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 low self-confidence. They, they, they're, they're internally weak. I don't mean that, I'm not saying this judgmentally, I'm just saying this factually. They are psychologically impaired. Maybe weak, you know, it sounds too judgmental to you. That's okay. But they're impaired psychologically. They are psycho-emotionally impaired. They are not strong people. That's why bullies bully. Think about it. Because if a bully is a bully, not feeling really strong, but wants to put up a good front to the world, what does he or she do? And, it, and the women can bully just as much as men can. Uh, I've experienced female bullying in a work situation. Whole other story. Okay, so um, they make other people around them feel weaker. They bully them. They make them feel weaker. Those people cower in the corner. Oh, I'm scared of that person. Oh, I don't want to piss that person off. Oh, I got to be nice to that person. Oh, I got to let him do whatever he wants to do, whatever he wants to eat. Whatever he wants. Oh, he wants me to say that. I'll get up to the podium. I need to say that. Whatever I need to say, I'll say, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. That's what the bully wants. Because then the bully feels more powerful. Because he's made all of you around him feel weaker. And then the bully feels, he or she feels more powerful and feels better, more self-confident. That's why bullies bully. Do you want to be in a romantic, long-term relationship with somebody like that? Filter, filter, filter. It's it, this, That kind of cruelty is where that comes from. And those bullies, then you give them more permission to bully you. Then they just, that's when, I mean, I had one of my jobs, one of, one of my friends who was back in the old days, this is, this is how it tells you how old this story is, um, uh, she was bullied by her husband, who was a, well, I, I, I don't want to say his profession because I don't want to denigrate that profession. But um, he, he, he bullied her, and they had two little babies. And uh, she would come to my office at the firm I was working at and cry. She would cry because, uh, and she was in her 20s, and um, young babies and so forth. And um, she would cry. And she came in with a black eye one day and she was wearing sunglasses and she told people she just, she walked into a wall by accident and he punched her. 
And a, an, another day she came into my office and she, and she told me that he had thrown a hammer, a hammer with a claw on the back of it. She'd thrown a ha- He had thrown a hammer at her in the kitchen in front of the little kids. And the ham- the claw of the hammer got stuck in the wood of the kitchen cabinet where the dishes were behind or wherever, you know? That's how hard he threw the hammer at her, all right? So bullies, that's, that's a slippery slope, I'm just saying, women. Do not, if you have a guy who's cruel to you, who bullies you, it's a slippery slope. Don't allow that. Don't allow that. And, and, and it's not, don't allow that for yourself. And, and it's terrible for the children to observe. It's horrible for the, it's horrible teaching for the children because the, the, the father is teaching the children by his example. And you indirectly are teaching the children that that's okay, that that's acceptable behavior. And that you're, so you're, you're an indirectly allowing the education of your children by your husband, not good, okay? Um, you know, women for millennia have been told that they are lesser uh, culturally, legally. They're paid less now. Um, and um, so I applaud you women in the audience who are strong women and who stand up to the bullies in your life, whether they be under the same roof as you, hopefully not, or whether they be in the employment arena or wherever, and you've demanded more equal pay, equal pay, more equal and then equal pay, etc. So, But this has been going on for millennia. And let me just give perspective for a second here, because you guys know my memories go back thousands of years. Women, you know, obviously... At least you have the, you can you can have jobs and you can own property to now. And, and not too long ago, you couldn't vote. You know, it was, you know, 100 years ago, you couldn't vote in the United States. And uh, thousands of years ago, you were, you were treated as property, you know. So th- has it improved? Yes. But is it where it should be? Absolutely not. And I am a protector of women and children, and it really upsets me when I hear these things. But again, I don't want to digress. Um, so what happened also in a date in the dating, I'm talking about relationships in the dating arena here, just giving again, I'm issue spotting, I'm giving tips, is that in the 1960s, for those of you who are too young to know, in the 1960s, you know, Gloria Steinem is the woman who's kind of given credit for this, but it was a movement and uh, of women being stronger and empowering themselves internally. And it was a good thing from a certain perspective and a not good thing from another certain perspective. And you women may say, what do you mean not good? Well, here's the thing. What happened was uh, men started getting confused (laughs) about how to treat women and so forth. And so I think fast forward, you know, 50 years now, you got a lot of men who are really confused about how to treat a woman. All right. And so you got to be aware of that and give the guys, cut the guys a little bit of slack, especially the more conscious ones. I'm not talking about the, the six pack drinking, you know, um, you know, um, macho bully guys. I'm not talking about those guys. I'm talking about the more sensitive ones that they're, you know, they're, they're, they're a little confused. So they may need a little bit of your help. <laughs> I'm saying this to the women out there in terms of helping educate them on how to, how to interact. This is a good communications point anyway for both genders about communicating with each other of where the where the gray areas are, where the comfort zones are, and where the discomfort zones are. The comfort zones are easy to talk about, right? What we both like. What about the discomfort, the, the, the uncomfortable stuff? That's what we need to talk about uh, in our relationships, all right? But that whole women's lib thing, women's liberation thing, women's power... And what it led to, those of you who aren't old enough to know this, what, uh, what, what it led to is a lot of women being like men. And I'll tell you, just from my own college perspective, and I say this in a non-judgmental way, but just a statement of fact, is that my college, when it went co-ed, 
So Dartmouth, all the Ivy League schools were all male forever. You know, talk about, you know, non-equal, okay? <clears throat> That's why the Seven Sisters schools were created, you know, uh, hundreds, you know, 150 years ago, whenever they were created in the 1700s, <clears throat> however many years that is. Um, the Seven Sisters schools, you know, Mount Holyoke, uh, Smith, Wellesley, uh, Vassar, and I don't know what the other seven, the other ones are of the seven. But then you get the Ivy League schools. They're all male, okay? So they became co-ed when I was there. In fact, my class at Dartmouth was the first class to vote. The, the president, who was uh, John Kemeny at the time, who was a great, great guy, um, um, said, no, all, this, all the male students need to vote for this too. The Board of Trustees uh, is voting, but we want the input of all the the male students, uh, which was all male when I was there. And then we voted like, I don't know, it was like 75, 25% or something like that. 75% of us voted in favor of co-education. All right. So, um, but my point about this, this, this kind of sort of women being like men issue, again, figuratively speaking, Dartmouth, you looked at which, what kind of women they, 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 they uh, recruited, admitted to Dartmouth. The admissions office, I'm not saying they were men-ish. I mean, they were very female and so forth and so on. But a lot of them were jocks. A lot of the women initially were jocks. And that's just, I don't know. Because I, I was I was interviewing um, students at the time for dark, high school students. I was an alumnus alumni interviewer, and you could see and you could see and okay, oh look at who they look at who they admitted. Look which women they admitted in these first early classes. Again, I was friends with some of those women who were admitted, and am still friends with some of them. So they don't all fall into that category. But there was a there was a a, a selection process and that that of who's going to fit in more, more easily in the initial classes of women that was their filter but you know um so again i don't want to piss off some of my some of the women who who who, who joined dartmouth a year or two three years after i graduated because they were not all like that but there was this tendency i'm just saying um <clears throat> and so, you know, I just say this as a dating relationship issue, because this whole um, expression of women as more powerful has scared some guys, and they're not sure how to interact with you. So there's this soft side to women. I say soft, soft in a gentle way, in a kind way. I don't mean weak way. You can be powerful and gentle at the same time. And I'm saying this to both the men and the women. So you can be powerful and gentle and kind at the same time. Now, not everybody's personality is like that. Okay? Not everybody's personality is like that. So you have to go with what your personality is. I'm just saying, again, we're talking about online dating. you got to screen for what meets your needs, what meets your personality needs. All right. Um, you know, you know, be who you are, not what he or she wants. Right. That's relationship 101, but especially in online, because it's just so much fraught with fake stuff or maybe fake is, a, 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 you know, there is fake. There are lots of fake stuff, but it's fake may be too strong, but people will spin things online in the social media to meet what they think you want to hear, all right? But the rubber meets the road with when their guard is down and who are they really. That's what you need to look for, okay? Because um, that you want them to be them and you want to be you in a healthy relationship, right? So not what the other person, not what that Sometimes I use this phrase in relationship talks that I give. The ideal image. We may have an ideal image. Well, let me just step back for a second. I created my ideal image, and I suggest that you do this. For me, what worked was 
I literally wrote it down. I wrote down, this is what I'm looking for. Boop, boom, 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 boom. And I wrote down everything. <clears throat> and this is just between you and you. This is private. So you can get as explicit as you want on this. Whatever. It's just for you, for your eyes only. And I wrote down from a physical, emotional, mental, spiritual level, all of the different things that I'm looking for in a, in, 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 the, in the woman. Now, and then I suggest that you go through. So first you just throw everything on the whiteboard, so to speak. Those of you who know what brainstorming is. You know, you just throw everything up there. Don't worry about prioritizing. So this is this is just basic brainstorming technique, which I used to do when I did had corporate jobs. One of the things I did with, with groups of people. So you just throw it up there. Doesn't matter. Order, priority, importance, irrelevant. Then you go back. Then you, because you want to stay in the creative Free flowing, free mind, free flow, free flow of your mind mode. Throw it up there. Write it down on the paper. Throw it on the whiteboard if you have a whiteboard. And then go back and prioritize. Then you go back and say, okay, here's what I really want. Blah, 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 blah. But don't just stop there. Because what I found was that that was an organic uh, work, a, a organic process. And, and, the, and, and the, the list was an organic piece of work. Not only that, but then I would go meet somebody and then I go, you know what? That this one really needs this point down here needs to really be higher based on those two dates that I just had with somebody. So in other words, you've got to test it out in in, in reality, not just have this ideal image in your mind and then go out and apply it black and white, rule based, you know, see you later. Okay. Because what I found was that there's a lot of gray in there. These aren't even the, even the 12 or 15, I can't remember, 20 things that I had there on the sheet. There's a lot of gray there. And what about this one? Well, that one, if this one moves up a little bit, this one can move down a little bit because it makes up sort of my, sort of kind of in my needs. These are needs based, okay? Needs based list for me personally, very personal. Then this one, it makes up for this one a little bit, blah, 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 that kind of thing, all right? But how do you find that out? You get out there and you're experimenting by mentally applying that and coming back and looking at the list. So that worked worked well for me. And then, and then, um, but then again, back full circle to this turning within, the meditation technique I teach or whatever process works for you. The turning within process works for you, whether it's my technique or another technique. You got to do that. Why? Because you're making your mind more powerful. What does that do? That puts out air uh, radio waves uh, into the air waves. It puts out your energy field. Your mind is an energy field. We are an energy field. Our mind, my individual mind, you put that out there and you can you'll, you will start attracting. Because other minds will pick up on that. Now, which minds do you want to, those of you who are my more spiritually oriented, self-development oriented audience here? Some of you are more into that, some may be less into that. But the ones who are more into that, wh who are you going to attract? You will understand this. I mean, this is true for anybody. You don't have to be into self-development at, at all. But the more you, you'll understand this principle, my students will. In other words, who... Who are you going to attract more? You're going to attract more the, the mind that's more powerful because the mind that's more powerful out there is going to pick up on what you're sending out there in terms of this hypothetical list that I'm just talking about that you just created on your whiteboard, okay? And that you're, you've put all this energy into, and then it's, it's out in the airwaves. You know, you've sent your radio waves out into the airwaves, into the universe, right? This is this notion... You know, you know, people talk about the law of attraction. That's the real law of attraction. It's not just like made up. Okay, you know, just think some magic spell and then boom, boom, boom. No, it's no, it's no, it's no much more complicated than our own mind thinking things more powerfully, and then we can make them happen. Now, um, we may run into roadblocks here and there. But the more powerful we our mind is, as we've already talked about in the soul contract uh, discussion today, we can we can figure ways around it and so forth. 
But in this online dating and the dating and the relationship arena, there's a tip for you, okay? And, and those of you who, who meditate, keep meditating. <laughs> It'll also allow your mind to be more clear thinking and discerning, which is what the theme is of this whole thing. Be open yet discerning, okay? Um, but again, just a note to the guys out there. I understand you know, you're, you're, it's confusing for guys out there. We want women want us to be loving and kind and 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 listening. Skills need to improve amongst all of us guys and so forth. Be better listeners and so forth. But they, some, 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 very often they, they still want us to be the hunter and the warrior. Sometimes the hunter and the warrior. Are we, so are we the hunter? Are we the warrior? Are we the gatherer? <laughs> are we the the nurturer? Are we the therapist? Uh, you know, there's this, there's this, uh, <laughs> this, this show on. I think it's Netflix that I watched with my friend Josh. Uh, the whole series, uh, uh, you know, turn. It's called Turn. It's about the Revolutionary War, and I and, uh, can't remember the character's name, but the main character. Am I a cabbage? Am I a cabbage farmer or am I a revolutionary? He was in the, during the Revolutionary War. He was a cabbage farmer. Which am I? You know. Um, so, so the guys are in a quandary about this. So I guess I'm saying to the guys, you know, I hear you, you know, the women want all of that to, to some extent. And, and, um, again, and if you're in a gay relationship, you know, again, you, 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 you can, ex you, you know, uh, transpose what I'm saying into your gay relationship as well. Um, you know what I'm talking about, but women, you need to be. Um, again, I'm back in the, my hetero uh, perspective. Women, you need to be cognizant of it. It's tough for the guys sometimes. So you get to cut them a little bit of slack. But educate them. Don't just let them step on you. You know, educate them. And if they're not educable, <laughs> if, they're, if they fail in the education, then, you know, take, take whatever appropriate steps you feel is appropriate for you and the family. All right? Um, all right, let me just see if I've covered everything in my notes. See if there's any other questions people want to ask or whatever. Um, yeah, I just made a note. I saw this ad, and I was watching a football game the other day. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, uh, another one of these jewelry store ads, you know, name the chain, whatever. I don't want to be advertising for them here. But, you know, I just, I, I saw for the umpteenth time, you know, another TV ad and, and telling Telling you women or your guy, spouse, boyfriend, whatever, to, you know, the, you, to, to buy yet another expensive necklace to show your love. After all, it's been two years, three years, five years, 10, 15 years, pick, fill in the blank, since your last purchase from us. You know, really? You know, is, uh, so women, I just I'm speak, you got to honestly ask yourself, is that the kind of guy you want who just buys you stuff? All right. It's that, and, and it may be, and that's okay. Again, I'm just issue spotting here, but just a, a cautionary note: you might end up with a house full of stuff and an empty heart at the end of the day. All right, relationships remember start on the inside, and they'll continue or not, depending on whether the inside flourishes. All okay? right. But again, I'm not saying don't buy jewelry, guys. If your if your if your wife or your girlfriend loves jewelry, I'm not saying not to because there's this whole love language thing, and I'm not going to get into that whole thing. That you can Google that yourself. This whole love language, in other words, people express their love in different ways, and their affection and their connection with people in different ways. So for some people, it's physical touching. For others, it's more emotional. Uh, others, it's you know talking. And sharing verbally, or in 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 about about intellectual deep ideas. For others, it's like, yeah, that's not my thing. So you got to align with that person in order to develop and deepen the relationship, and keep the relationship fresh, as they say, and and keep it going long term, based on you know which. And some of us, you know, have have multiple languages of love, not just one of the, I can't remember how many are in the, somebody's come up with this, you know, like list of five or six different languages, whatever, you know? <clears throat> All right. 
So a couple, I want to leave you with a couple of practical, very, very practical things, examples. So a friend of mine uh, watched a live feed of a, of, of a Facebook friend uh, afterwards. And this guy had done a Facebook uh, live, I guess, or whatever. And then um, she's just a Facebook friend of his. And, and, and um, at the afterwards, I think what happened was something like this, um, that she went on the comments afterwards and just put hi. So I'm going to give you some tips here to avoid awkward situations. She just put H-I there. Now, when a guy sees just H-I in a social media platform, most guys are thinking, huh, if, is she interested in me? <laughs> That's the way guys think, ladies. And if you guys ask me questions here in the chat box, in the, in the comment box, feel free, the women here. I'll tell you, I know what guy, I'm a guy. I know what guys think. I have lots of guy friends uh, of all different ages. My, my guy friends are like 25 years old to, to, I have guy friends 20 years old to, you know, 80 years old. So I know how guys think. So don't just write hi it, unless you're, you, you're, you're want to open up that door wider. Okay, and you want to let him in more and explore. If you're just saying hi to say hello, then say, hi, I liked your live stream. That was interesting what you said about X, Y, Z. All right. Don't just send a message to somebody say hi. All right. Uh, or another one, uh, another friend of mine um, with a client. So this was a professional client relationship. Uh, and she's a therapist, and and um, they decided to go on WhatsApp and um, and communicate on WhatsApp for whatever reason. I can't remember what the reason is. doesn't matter. So, you know, on that different platform to communicate messaging there versus texting or whatever, okay? So messaging on WhatsApp instead. So uh, the guy client sends her a WhatsApp message that says, can I message you here? And she gives a thumbs up. Now, again, women, don't do that. Because his comeback was, to her was, oh, great, I'm interested in you. And I'm wondering if we can, I know you're married. I know you have children. But I'm wondering, you know, I, I need to get together with you in person, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, what do you do on the weekends? I'm like, and she, and she, called me and told me this. And I said, yeah, because you gave him a thumbs up. That's how guys, th 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 now this, understand, this is a an existing professional client of hers. She's a therapist, okay? But she made the, what I would consider, the female blunder of giving him a thumbs up. Literally did a thumbs up, you know, the emoji thumbs up. So don't do that. So that so, so you, instead, what would have been better is to say, yes, you can communicate with me here on WhatsApp about, you know, the, the work we're doing together. In other words, it's a very nice way of underscoring that this is a work relationship and this is a work relationship uh, platform or, or that we're using. Not a, this, is a, this is a platform we're going to use for our work relationship to underscore that. Then if he comes back and says, oh, you know, I, I want to meet you, blah, 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 you have a little bit of more momentum in a sense. No, she did come back and say what, what was a pro the appropriate thing to say to him. You know, no, you know, <laughs> no, because he was inappropriate. She was not, she was not inappropriate for giving the thumbs up. She was just unclear. That's all I'm saying. So she was completely ethical here. He was the unethical one. And she put him in his place. But I'm just saying, I'm giving you women here a tip here to avoid the awkward situation. That's what I. That's what I. That's what I'm suggesting here. Another example. Uh, I was on a um, some. Uh, there was a guru on. There was some guru spiritual teacher type on a live feed that a friend of mine asked me to go on and just observe or whatever. Okay. So I saw this. 
Um, and he had a turban on and, uh, you know, the whole big beard, you know, the typical looking, you know, guru, the guru look, okay, of the clothes and the blah, 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 the robe, you know, I don't know what, Doty and this and that, uh, probably, <laughs> I don't know. But um, so afterwards or during it, he was texting her specifically that he wanted her to turn her video on on Zoom. He didn't ask me to turn my video on on Zoom, all right? And I I know that. We don't know if he asked other women on there to turn their videos on on Zoom. But is that appropriate behavior by for a professional, okay? I don't care if you're a spiritual teacher or not a spiritual teacher. Now, there you may if there's, if there's a logical reason like, oh, you're teaching a yoga class and I want to see that you're doing the positions the way I'm saying – and if I can help and give you tips. That's a different situation. That's not what this was. All right? It was inappropriate. And I don't care if you're a guru or a spiritual teacher. Even more so, it's inappropriate in my mind. Because I'm a spiritual teacher. I'm not a guru. I am, I'm not looking for followers. That's what I consider a guru. But I'm a teacher. And I'm a spiritual teacher. Even more inappropriate. All right? So again... Red flag. I'm just issue spotting for you, okay? Especially male healers. And, it, you know, can this be true for female healers as well to the men out there? Absolutely, yes. Can female healers be inappropriate? Um, let's just call it spade a spade here. Sexually inappropriate. Um, uh, is it possible? Yes. And uh, But I, I, I think... Guy, guys are more guilty of this than women are. Uh, let's just call it as it is. So, again, tips to the women. You know, don't put up with that from a male healer. You know, just be, you can be respectful in terms of your drawing the line. Um, don't jump immediately to filing a lawsuit. There's a little bit of craziness out there in the world with the Me Too movement. I am a big supporter of the whole Me Too movement. Um, idea, as you guys know, those of you who have taken my Afterlife series class, by the way, which another one starts on January 3rd, if you're interested, um, you know, I, I, you've heard me talk very emotionally sometimes about how protective I am, have been for thousands of years of women and children. But don't just jump all over the guy if the guy's inappropriate. Don't, don't take him to court immediately or file a sexual, sexual harassment suit. Um, first of all, you, you don't know the, law, the legal landscape. It's not pleasant to be even a plaintiff in the legal landscape. It's very, very draining and, uh, t and, and, and uh, unpleasant, the, the, the legal system in the United States. Um, so, um, but, but separate from that, um, you know, educate the guy or put him in his place like she did, this therapist did, I told you, my friend who's in the story, uh, a few minutes ago, just by saying, no, it's not, I'm not interested, you know, so forth. I have a family, et cetera. And, and then if he continues, then you would fire him. If he continues and didn't listen, you would fire him as a client. All right. But again, with guys, if they did this to you um, <clears throat> and ask inappropriate personal questions, for example, about your spouse, ladies, that's not appropriate, inappropriate questions, you know, okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. You're not hurting the guy's feelings. Uh, uh, it, it, and if he's inappropriate and his feelings get hurt, then that's on him. That's not you. So I say this because women tend to be much more wired towards not being nurturing and being worried about the, how's the other person feel about this. You need to look out for yourself, I'm saying. All right? Okay? Hey, let's see. Questions? Anything here? Anything on the comments here before we call it a session? Let's see. Yeah, it's hard. It is harder to be discerning when you commit to a relationship early in life. There's absolutely, look, I am, I wanted to say this to all you women out there and maybe the men, 
uh, who have made um, decisions to get married and have children when you were 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. It's tough. I am not, I'm not accusing you, blaming you. I absolutely, I am the non-guilt guy. You know, I'm the fear reduction guy, the non-guilt guy. I do not want to make any of you guys feel, you men or women, feel badly about the decision you've made in the past that may not have been a good decision for you personally and or for the children that you may may or may not have subsequently had with that spouse. So um, I feel for you. Um, I understand it's absolutely hard, harder to be discerning, uh, as, as Janice says, and, and you're, you're much wiser now. So uh, that's it, you know. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, those of you who are older may be afraid to date somebody who has an older body with medical issues and so forth, because then you may end up being a caretaker. So that's a it's a reasonable concern. It really is. And so, um, you know, I think that's why a lot of women, um, older women in their 60s, 70s, and so forth, um, you know, they just they date more lightly um, or or they or they just stay single and have friends kind of thing you know, and, and they're not as romantically, emotionally, uh, we could say, invested as they would be if they might have been younger, uh, if they might, if, if might, might have done it when they were younger, you know. Yeah, guy friends hitting on you all the time just for being nice to them. Exactly. That's what I mean. Most guys, look, <clears throat> it's an... I, 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 and that's not true for all guys, but most guys are wired evolutionarily. We all are, but most of them don't have the social emo and emotional intelligence to uh, to manage it <laughs> or desire to manage it. They don't even care. Some of them. Uh, so th those are the ones you're running into. But we, you know, we're, we're it's the it's the procreation of the species, you know. Uh, keep the species going. So that's how guys are kind of wired. So, you know, you get hit on all the time. Um, and you, and they're your friends. So it's just a matter of, you know, I, I would say if they're really your friends, then communicate with them and they should understand that. And then, you know, they may still tease you because if they, if you, if you, they find you attractive and everything, then that's, you know, they, they may tease you, but but it's not like really hitting on you, you know? Um, <clears throat> so the, that's, yeah, Rachel said the same thing. Um, do guys care about communication as much as you do? Yeah, a question from Heather here. I'd say, no, they don't. They really don't. Guys don't care, most guys. Uh, I do, and, and, and the guy friends who I have <laughs> all do, but that's why they're my guy friend, my my close core of guy friends. I have probably a close core of a dozen or fifteen like really close guy friends, and these guys communicate. And we all have various degrees of ability and ways of how we communicate, uh, and so forth and so on. But um, we all care about it a lot, um, and there are guys out there. And so I say to you, Heather and others who are looking for a guy perhaps, who is more communicative. Think about it. I, I, I use the real estate example uh, with people because people can relate to real, the real estate example. I say, look, when you're selling a house, <clears throat> you only want one buyer, right? You only want one buyer. It's like whatever the market's doing, you want one buyer because that's all it's going to take and if even if you get multiple offers, you could only accept one buyer, right? And so the same thing in the relationship world. It's like there's like zillions of guys out there. Zillions of them are not meant for you. And there's a handful. There's not one. 
So there's not one soulmate. There's probably hundreds of them out there. And you only need one. Now, I don't know, Heather. I'm not speaking for you. Maybe you want two. <laughs> I don't know, Heather. I don't know you that well. But I'm just joking with you. You know what I mean? Maybe you want three. But, but you know, um, as you say, like, like, I was like texting during the day, et cetera, but I find most guys don't as much. Oh, you like texting during the day. Most guys don't like texting during the day. Well, yeah, who knows? Yeah, they just, um, you know, their mind is, uh, I don't know what that's about. Um, uh, <clears throat> you know, male or female, you could be busy at work. I mean, I have, I've, 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 I've been, when I was doing online dating and texting with women and so forth, there were, there were women who were bit very busy during the day and they could only text with me at night. So I don't know what that, that is. Um, that's possible. <laughs> one is good, Heather. Okay, Heather. Okay. Just one. I didn't want to speak for you, Heather. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know you that well. Yeah. You know, Rachel said, what happened to chivalry? Exactly. See, that's what I mean. When I was talking about the patriarch, uh, looking for the patriarch and the strong guy, I don't think it is mutually exclusive. That's my opinion. Well, that's how I roll anyway. But but again, there are guys out there who are not just strong, chivalrous guys who have the oh, not chivalrous. Chivalry means what? Well, let's define chivalry because I actually have I have a I have at least one lifetime that I have. It's one of my lifetimes that I have the most memories of, uh, of one of the several, there's three or four I have like the most memories of out of the 25 that, lifetimes that I have memories of. One of them is from that time. So let's talk about that. That time, you know, a thousand years ago, chivalry, knights, uh, K-N-I-G-H-T, <laughs> not N-I-A-G-H-T, but, you know, knights in armor and so with knights in chain mail. For me, it was chain mail. <clears throat> Before there was plated armor, we just we had chain mail, um, and but there was this code of honor, and and you wouldn't kill somebody even. It wasn't just with women, it was with men as well, and we were protectors of women and children, the 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 those who could not physically protect because it was a tough world then. I mean, it's like swords, it's like the Wild West with guns except the Wild West with no guns back then in Europe, all right? And in a Asia it would too, but I don't have memories of Asia back then. I have memories of being in Europe then. Um, and it was chain mail, swords, maces, clubs, lances, <laughs> and helmets. It was whack. It was not uh, a kind and gentle battlefield, let's say. And... Um, and protecting women was part of our code. So that, that's where this whole notion of being sh chivalrous um, came. And, um, and we would not just protect the women. We would protect the men who just had pitchforks, basically, and shovels, you know, the farmers and so forth. Because why? It was in all of our interest because they fed us and so forth and so on. It was a symbiotic thing. Now, it wasn't a utopian world by any stretch of the imagination it was much more cruel and 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 and, and, and uh, difficult let's just say we will call it than the world we live in now but what happened to chivalry it's a good question and i think that's what i was re referring to rachel with the women's live movement in the 1960s i think the notion of chivalry got very confused amongst the guys well, I want us to be more sensitive. The women are so strong. Now, the women are like in our face. Back in the 60s, women, some women, not all women. And again, those women out there who lived through this, I'm not talking about all women. But there was a movement that essentially, I'll just, I'm just stilling it down to the essence here. It scared a lot of guys. And then, and then, and then, and then all those lawsuits and then laws started being passed and so forth. And, it's, and it scared a lot of guys. And I'm concerned, to be honest, in now, in 2020, with if the Me Too movement, you know, it, 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 it's, 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 it seems to have eased up. But I was starting to get concerned uh, with, 
with some of this, with the, the uh, lawsuits that were fo found to be uh, revenge lawsuits by some women, in other words, it was, they were found to be not factually accurate, um, that that was actually going to hurt the women's empowerment movement. That's because I'm all about women empowerment. But if you accuse a guy of something, you got to be able to back that up. And then, and then it's difficult, I understand, but um, it, it's just, it, it's a, it, this, is, this is a whole other discussion um, because guys need to step up to the plate too. But my point is, to answer your point of where, where Chivalry went, that's part of the story. I think that's a big part of the story. And then, plus, it's never been treatment of women has never, ever, uh, the women's lib movement did not improve the treatment of women as much as it would have liked to. That's another bottom line, too. All right? <clears throat> um, Rachel said, I have to be physically attracted to you. Then let's take it further in text. Talk on the phone, and if that goes, we'll meet in person. But guys that message me, hold on, let's see. Then we'll meet in person. But guys that message me, I had to scroll down here. But guys that message me start off nice, then start messaging sexual things and wanting pictures of my, yeah, privacy. It sucks. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> well, those guys, that's, that's, that, that's a block. Okay, Rachel, that is a block. Um, and especially if you just, if you tell the guy, no, no, that's not, and they continue. Now, if you're really interested in the guy and you've been kind of playing with him, flirting with him and so forth, then you you might you may have opened the crack in the door a little bit there, so to speak, to use that analogy. Um, and so then you might give him a, uh, you know, you, 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 you put him on notice. You just say, look, that's not where I'm at right now. Um, in, 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 you know, we, we need to meet da, 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 before we even get there, you know. But if, 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 if the guy, if you're not even at that stage with the guy yet, I would just block him. That's like, that's just like throw him in the trash. All right. There's the, most guys, I'm telling you, they're not going to meet with you. That's why I said to you, and, and I ran into it and I'm saying this to the guys out there right now. I ran into it as a guy that there were, there were women not as many women as guys, from what I've heard from the women, my women friends. What Rachel is saying is like endemic. It's just a, like a pandemic. It's like an online dating pandemic, what she's describing here. Um, but not as many women. But some women just want to text or they just want to talk on the phone. And it's like, you know, uh, at first I was like engaging in that. And I was like, you know, after an hour, you know, I've been texting, and then I'm on the phone for an hour. I had a nice conversation. Oh, I want to talk again. And then I, I did that. I did that a few times, but it was like enabling dysfunctional behavior. You know that psychological term? It's called enabling a dysfunctional behavior. And that's all they want. Well, that's not what, now, again, I'm just issue spotting. Some of you may, that's, that's all you want. That's okay. Well, online dating is a perfect place to do that. But if you really want to meet somebody, no, you got to, I agree with what you said earlier. Uh, I think it was Rachel. It might have been Heather. Whoever said, earlier, you know, moving it forward and getting face to face. And the other tip, it's an obvious tip, but I'm going to state the obvious to the women out there. You meet in a public place. You meet in a public place where there's a lot of activity. There are cameras. All right. You don't meet in some private dimly lit place the first guy time you meet a guy all right it's just common sense but i'm just overstating the obvious but it's important obvious to be stated um that's why i do starbucks or you know pete's or some coffee place or a tea place or whatever you know <clears throat> it's low key it's not some dimly lit wine cellar all right but you gotta go down the stairs into you know you know no you walk in right from the street into this brightly lit place that you know Star 
Starbucks got cameras everywhere, and and you um, and you have a cup of tea or a cup, a cup of coffee or a cup of bottle. I I did bottled water and juice, you know, whatever. I had a smoothie there, Starbucks. Okay, that's 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 what you need to do until you trust the guy. All right. So um, yeah, quick coffee dates the best. You weed them out as fast as you can. Absolutely, Heather. That's what you do. Because you're weeding out and you're not spending so much of your valuable time. Look, look, when I was in Austin, Texas, um, I had an I had a Starbucks. Literally, I did not have to cross the street to get to. It was on my block. I walked, I got in my apartment, I walked out of my apartment, got in the elevator, went down the whatever the six floors to the street. I walked a hundred feet up to the Starbucks. I didn't have to drive my car, didn't cost me any gas. You know, I literally walked 100 feet into the Starbucks, boom. That's what I started doing. And, you know, it just, that was, that was good enough, you know? See if it works. See if there's a, you got to, the physical attraction, I, I'm, I, I, that's how I'm wired too. But, you know, not everybody is, okay? Not everybody is. Again, we're just issue spotting here. But whatever it is, you got to be attracted. The chemistry has to be there, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, chemistry. Whatever is your first threshold, whichever one of those is your first threshold, that's got to be there. And then, boom, you know? <laughs> yeah, no back alleys, Rachel said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know? Uh, Austin, yeah. I, I, Austin, I love... I, Los Angeles, I love living in Los Angeles. My kids are here, and this is my third time living in Los Angeles. Um, so my kids live nearby. But also, I would have moved back here anyway. <clears throat> I love Los Angeles. It's um, it's just such an easy place to live. The weather is so easy. You know, I grew up in Boston with the snow and the ice. I lived in New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, uh, D.C., North Carolina. So I've lived up and down the East Coast. I've lived in uh, the Midwest, I lived in Iowa for a while in the hot and humid and stinky pig farm smells uh, <laughs> summers, summer in uh, Iowa. I've lived a lot of different places just in the United States, never mind the other countries I've lived in. And uh, this is easy, easy getting around. People are friendly. You don't have to worry about trying to find good, healthy food here. This is like this. This is the state of the beginning of good, healthy food. And so, um, so all my basics are covered here, uh, and I can swim year round. I swim in my heated city swimming pool, um, which is literally two miles from where I live, et cetera, et cetera. Plus I got my own pool here at the apartment complex, which is not heated, but so <clears throat> yeah, much easier than living on the East coast for me. Um, let's see. I also keep meeting avoidant dismissive type men. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Very good point, Heather sharing here. Keep the meeting the what the guys who avoid meeting you. The, the the kind of dismissive types. She said, you know, the push and pull ones, she said here. You know, the ones who push and pull. Exactly. Um those guys, you avoid them. Same thing with the men. I'm talking to the men here. The women, there are there are lots of women out there like that too. All right, they want to tease you. They want to have a online relationship with you. They're gonna push pull. Yeah, see you later. Bye. Goodbye. X you out. X. That's an X. X. See you later. All right. Yeah. California is great, Rachel. Yeah, I love living here. It's great. This is my third time living here. I think I said that today. Third time living here out of the 28 cities I've lived in. 28 cities. I think I've moved like 40 or 50 times. So anyway, um, anything else? Any other comments or questions? Because um, I'm going to put this on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Uh, so that's why I'm also why I'm reading the, the comments because obviously um, the YouTube viewers will not be able to read my screen. <laughs> um, anything else before we go? I hope this has been helpful. So we've covered the, the range, <laughs> souls, soulmates, soul contracts to dating, relationships, 
online dating, existing relationships, a little touch on marital relationships. So uh, I hope I hope the issue spotting here for you has been helpful, and you can glean some tips here that are that are useful for you that helps you build your relationships better as you go forward. Because for me, all these lifetimes I've had over the last <clears throat> umpteen years, uh, how many, uh, you know, as a human, I don't know. I don't know what I was before I was a human. But, um, you know, all these memories that I've had, the thing that sticks out in my memories is the most, uh, is the most is, is are my relationships. Are my friendships, my romantic relationships, my close friendships with others, and just my relationships with those who may not be my close core of friends who become my friends. Even this lifetime, for example, um, getting in it when, when I was had one of my more corporate and legal jobs, you know, getting in a cab at a train station for the five or 10 minute cab ride through uh, the city to my office to go meet with a bunch of uh, members of my firm. Um, in that five minute cab ride, I connected with the cab driver. To me, that's a relationship. That's a friendship. I never saw the cab driver again. I still haven't, you know, Baltimore, Maryland, one guy in particular I'm thinking of, but this has happened to me here in LA. You know, I've traveled so many places around the world. I connect with people. To me, that's what life is about, these connections that we have. And so if you can glean any tips from what we talked about today in these soul connections that we all have, and that soul connection that I had with that Baltimore, Maryland cab driver for five minutes, um, where he just bears his soul to me and just opens up and tells me stuff in five minutes in a cab ride that I can tell that it's not something that he normally would tell people. That's the kind of openness in our souls that we can have with other beings. That kind of relationship and friendship that we can have, getting a little emotional right now, um, to help make the world a better place. Okay, great to see everybody. Thanks for, uh, thanks for you guys being on live. Um, yeah, Michael said, relationships make the world go round. Very interesting telecast. Thanks, Kelvin. Yeah, great to have you on, Mike. Thanks for helping me test the, the lighting out beforehand. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys. Take care.